Hey folks, I'm Bryce, this is Marty, and Aaron's coming to us from Tirana. This is our last update of 2019. Before we get into the new updates for manufacturing, I do want to remind everyone that generative design is free through the end of the year. So if you have some projects you've been thinking of doing, now is the time. It is no cloud credits to use. So get in there, get your hands dirty, and let's jump in. This video will actually cover the November and December updates for manufacturing, and there's a lot to cover, so let's get into it. We'll start with what's possibly my favorite update this round. In the navigation bar, there are now options to sync view and visibility with the active setup. When enabled, syncing the visibility will only show bodies or components related to the active setup. So you'll see what you selected as the model or fixture when creating the setup. Note that component visibility will carry over into other workspaces. So if you aren't seeing bodies or components you need to see, right click and select show all to reset the visibility. Syncing the view will automatically align the orientation to the setup orientation, such that Z is pointing up and X is pointing to the right. You can also associate a named view for finer control over the orientation when the setup is activated. You can now also control the visibility of individual toolpaths, so you can see the toolpath preview without needing to have the toolpath selected. This is especially helpful for comparing two strategies or viewing multiple toolpaths at once. Up next, selection sets are now available in the manufacturer workspace. Selection sets allow you to save and reuse a selection of multiple objects, so you don't have to go through and reselect them every time. There are a ton of good turning improvements in this update, starting with reduced feed control for face operations. As the tool approaches the center of the part, it also approaches a theoretical surface speed of zero, and there's a high risk of damaging the insert while removing the final bits of material. Use Reduced Feed Rate allows you to set a reduced feed rate and a radius at which to begin the reduced feed, helping mitigate issues close to the center of the part. It's even shown in the toolpath preview as a yellow line segment. For profile roughing and finishing, the default turning mode is now set based on the selected tool. So if a boring bar is selected, the turning mode will automatically change to inside profile, and if changed back to a general turning tool, it will automatically change back to outside profiling. In profile roughing, we improved the linking between passes for both ways, eliminating unnecessary retract moves. We also added CAN cycle support for contact point tool limits in X and Z, as well as different X and Z clearance values. You can also now rapid to the first toolpath point in the linking tab. When checked, this will rapid the tool to the next cut depth. When unchecked, the tool will rapid to the previous cut depth and move to the next cut depth using the cutting feed rate. In single groove, you can now define axial stock to leave in addition to radial stock to leave. Make sure the groove side alignment is set to front or back to see the axial stock to leave parameter. This allows you to use the single groove operation as a roughing operation. And one specific application is grooving behind the part while leaving some axial stock to be removed during the parting operation. If you want to brush up on all the recent turning updates, there's a great blog post linked in the description that outlines the major recent enhancements. Finally, there are a few updates to the manufacturing extension. Steep and Shallow now supports at void touch surfaces for containment, just like most other 3D toolpaths in Fusion 360. We also added new options for viewing surface inspection results. In Preferences under General Manufacture, you can set the results display type to cylinder, pin, or confetti. Confetti is the default and looks like a colored disc. While confetti works in most cases, there are times when the curvature of the surface makes it difficult to view the disc on the part. Pins place a ball at the probe point with the skinny pin pointing in the surface normal with a length proportional to the deviation. Cylinders also have a length proportional to the deviation and point in the direction of the surface normal, but are a cylinder rather than a pin. Probe geometry now supports the selection of multiple holes in one operation, rather than the need to create several operations with one operation per hole. You can select the holes manually, and there's also a select same diameter option to expedite the process. Whoa, that select same diameter option in the probe geometry is such a time saver. Yeah, I was super excited to see that come in too. We've brought you guys so many great updates throughout 2019. I personally can't wait to see what we bring you in 2020. We'll see you next year.